Colby, 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 Colby. Colby. Okay, we're going to be subtracting mixed numbers on this uh, computation out video. We have eight and two thirds minus three and three fourths, and these are the more the more difficult type of um, uh, subtraction problems involving fractions because not only do we not have a common denominator, uh, but we're also going to need to borrow. I, I like to I often like to work um, with my expressions in a horizontal format like this. The one exception is when I'm subtracting mixed numbers, and I'll explain why. Let's rewrite this um, vertically as if we were using like the standard um, subtraction algorithm. And I'll explain why I prefer that in just a minute. First of all, we've got our place values lined up. We have holes here, and we have our fractional parts here. But um, we, do, we do not have like terms. We have thirds and fourths. You can't subtract fourths from thirds. Fourths are smaller than thirds. They're not the same size pieces, so we'll need to create like terms. Before we do that, I just want to mention, if, this, if these were... Uh, let's just take some random decimal numbers. If I were subtracting in, uh, uh, numbers in standard form, I would line up the ones place, I would line up the tenths place, and the, uh, the tenths place, and the hundredths place, and the thousandths place, and I would create like terms by showing the zero thousandths there. It's the same thing when you're working with mixed numbers. You line up your holes, and then you line up your fractional parts, and then you're going to have to convert these. Um, you need a, need a common denominator to create like terms. In this case, we have thirds and fourths. Thirds and fourths can both become twelfths. So let's do that next. I have two thirds. Thirds can uh, two thirds can become twelfths if I multiply by one in this form. Four over four. Four divided by four is one. If I multiply anything by one, the multiplicative identity tells us that we're not changing the value, and so I'll have an equivalent fraction. Thirds multiplied by fourths are twelfths, and two of four is eight. So I have eight twelfths. And the reason I like to work. Um, vertically is because then I can substitute um, my equivalent fractions uh, vertically uh, in a horizontal format and still have my vertical um, algorithm set up. So 8 and 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 and 8 twelfths. And we're going to um, substitute 3 and 3 fourths for 3 and you turn 3 fourths into twelfths by multiplying by 1 in the form 3 thirds. A fourth of a third is a twelfth and 3 of 3 is 9. So now I have 8, 8 and 8 twelfths minus 3 and 9 twelfths. We still have a bit of a problem. You can't subtract 9 twelfths from 8 twelfths. Well, actually you can. You'll get a negative uh, 1 twelfth. And we'll look, at, we'll look at that later. But typically when we're using this algorithm, we'll, we'll borrow. Just like you would borrow here if I... Um, let's see, I made this too easy, so I don't need to borrow. But, you know, when you're, when you're working with a standard algorithm, if you need to borrow from the higher place value up, you do that. And so I'd like to have more twelfths here than nine twelfths so that I could subtract easily subtract the nine twelfths from the number of twelfths I have up here. And there's plenty of twelfths to borrow from here in the eight. The eight is equal to ninety-six twelfths. But I don't need that many, I just need to borrow one whole. Make the eight a seven. And by borrowing one whole I've borrowed twelve twelfths. Twelve twelfths is one whole. So now I can rewrite this again as seven and 8 twelfths and 12 twelfths is 20 twelfths. And I'm, from that I'm going to subtract 3 and 9 twelfths. Now we have uh, twelfths in this column and we have holes in this column and so we can subtract 20 twelfths minus 9 twelfths is 11 twelfths and 7 losing 3 is 4. 11 twelfths cannot be simplified so we're done. I want to look at that other um, idea about using the negative number because I I did have some students last year that preferred this method. So let's go back to where we had 8 and 8 twelfths minus 3 and 9 twelfths. We know we can't we can subtract 9 twelfths from 8 twelfths but we get a negative 1 twelfth. And if I subtract 8 from 3 I get 5. Well what's 5 plus a negative 1 twelfth or 5 minus 1 twelfth? It's just 1 12th less than 5, which is 4 and 11 twelfths. So you can do it that way if that, you know, if you like that method. Uh, let's look at another example here. This time I've already set it up in the vertical um, format. But again, we don't have like terms. We have thirds and eighths. 
thirds and eighths can both become 20 fourths. So 2 thirds multiplied by 8 eighths is equal to 16 20 fourths. I'm going to substitute 5 and 2 thirds for 5 and 16 20 fourths. And 7 eighths multiplied by 3 thirds is 21 20 fourths. So I'm going to substitute 1 and 7 eighths for 1 and 21 20 fourths. I would like to have more 20 fourths up here, so I'm going to borrow one whole from the 5, making it 4. And when I borrow one whole, that's equivalent to 24 20 fourths. So now I have 4 and a total of 40. 16 plus 24 is 40 20 fourths. 4 and 40 20 fourths losing 1 and 21 20 fourths. 40 minus 21 is 19, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So my difference is 3 and 19 20 fourths. 19 is a prime number, and 24 is not a multiple of 19, so this cannot be simplified. They have no common factors other than 1. Um, and one thing I want to talk about, though, is checking your work. So. If I take my 3 and 19 20 fourths and I add it to our subtrand here, 1 and 7 eighths, uh, let's do it in the form 1 and 21 20 fourths. I would get 4 and 40 20 fourths. 40 20 fourths is improper fraction. It's equivalent to 4 plus 1, because 24 20 fourths is 1, and I would have 16 20 fourths left over. 16 20 fourths um, simplifies to uh, dividing by a common factor of 8, 2 thirds. So I have 5 and 2 thirds. And that was our original uh, menu end, so we know that we have the correct answer. When you're taking tests, I mean, really always when you have time, but especially when you're taking tests and you have time left over, this is the kind of thing, if you, after you've done all your work, you go back and do things like this to check your work, it's going to make a huge difference in your test grades. So. Um, if, there's lots of uh, practice down below the video. I hope you'll take advantage of some of that. And uh, thank you for taking the time to watch the video and work.